Hi everyone. Uh, well, it's been some time since I did um, a live during the day. Um, just uh, taking some time to seek the Lord even as we're fasting and praying. It's a very sensitive time right now. And uh, to be able to tap into the glory of God, we need to be able to not miss the timing. Um, so I just want to um, do a very quick video about... Hi Maggie. Hi. Good to see you darling. I want to do a quick video about um, healing and uh, why people get healed, why others don't get healed, and um, about sustaining healing. So to be able to be healed, um, you need to have faith, okay? So there's the faith of the one who is laying hands on you, um, who God is using, uh, but also the person who is receiving needs to have faith, unless the Lord comes through uh, by mercy. And um, normally we exalt the name of Jesus. There's nobody who can heal other than Jesus himself. But in some cases, you find some people get healed with manifestation that the healing has happened instantly and while others do not get healed. Um, so one of the observations I've had, uh, even as I've um, uh, laid hands on people um, to be healed, is being able to watch my uh, two little young ones. Um, I've had my baby, who is six years old, get so sick, very, very sick. Um, including uh, physical manifestations of sickness, you know, like she has a rash all over her body. There's a day she had a rash all over her body. And um, I laid hands on her. I asked her, honey, do you believe that Jesus will heal you? And she said, yes. And I laid hands on her and I began to pray. And I said, you have faith as I'm having faith. And I began to pray over her and declare healing. And as I looked at her, the uh, physical blemishes, the, 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 the rashes that had come upon her, they disappeared right before my eyes um, and right before her eyes. And, you know, she did not look like, oh, I can't believe it's done. So she said, oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, I knew Jesus would heal me. And then she continued. So that's the faith of a child. And so many of us just won't have that kind of faith. And very often that is where we're not healed. The same thing happens to um, my eight-year-old when she was very, very little. I remember um, her getting the kind of colds where her eyes are running, her nose is running. And, you know, her eyes are swollen and puffy and red. And she's really, really, really sick. And I would lay hands on her and ask her, do you believe that Jesus will heal you? And she would say, yes, I believe. And then... One time, I, several times actually, I remember laying hands on her and the Lord would just heal her instantly. Her eyes would clear, her nose would stop running, uh, the fever would disappear right in front of our eyes. Over and over, this kept happening. Then one day, um, you know, I remember uh, laying hands on her and then heading on to church. These things normally will happen on a Sunday morning and I can't, I'm not going to hospital. So I have to just believe the Lord that he knew that this day we we're going to be preaching and go on with her. And I remember on the way to the hospital, no, when we got into the car, she hadn't manifested healing yet and she kept saying mom I'm not better I'm not healed and I kept saying you have to believe you have to believe you have to believe then we'll be driving and she says mom I'm still not better and I'm like you're healed by the stripes of Jesus you're healed by the stripes of Jesus then I remember getting into church and I'm interceding and she comes and taps me and tells me mom I'm still sick and I'm like you're healed by the stripes of Jesus you have to declare it you have to believe it the Lord will do it but before the end of the service she was completely healed you know so again um, steps of faith and believing sometimes somebody will be healed instantly and at other times it may be a journey of still believing and declaring I am healed I am healed then of course there's the issue of sustaining healing how do you sustain healing you sustain healing through continuing to believe allowing God to use the healing miracle that has been used in your life for the glory of God a lot of people get healed and then after they are healed, they forget about God. They don't even give their lives to Christ, even though God has shown a miracle. They don't rededicate their lives to Christ if they are born again. And they go about life. And some of them even go back to sinning. And Jesus was very clear. Do not sin, lest the worst thing come upon you. And that's what a lot of people forget. They get caught up in, oh, I'm better. I feel good. You know, they forget the healer. They forget the one who gave them the gift. And they forget to realize that when God visits you with healing, he probably probably wants to do much more. And many people who are miraculously healed, by the way, are often um, endowed with a gift of healing as well to then go and lay hands on others that they may be able to recover. So in the last two days, as I've been weeping on my floor, the Holy Spirit had arrested me or has arrested me. I've not been able to leave my bedroom. And um, as the Lord was speaking to me, other than, of course, to minister, sorry, like I'm heading out now. But what the Lord is saying very clearly is that we must begin um, healing, healing services to lay hands on the sick and they recover. God has already shown me people leaving their wheelchairs, people leaving their crutches, uh, people leaving their oxygen masks and everything. And more and more, as we 
have our services, we will have a moment to just allow the Lord to manifest himself through miraculous healing um, and what is called also divine healing. Uh, but when we come to the presence of God, we must have faith. It's very, very important that we have faith. Um, today I was watching a clip um, on uh, healing and it was interesting to know this guy had a stomach cancer and when he was brought by somebody, do you remember by the way the guy, the guy who was lifted through the roof um, on his bed by his friends? That is called faith. It's when you have friends who have faith that Jesus will heal, uh, heal you and do something even though the doctor has given you a bad report saying that this cannot be healed, this cannot be done and there is no name that is bigger than the name of Jesus or the cancer, HIV or whatever chronic condition you have been told, the Lord uh, stops the path of a chronic condition by cutting off its life and cursing it as it cast the fig tree and that disease will have to die and fall off from you. You just need to believe and have faith that Jesus heals not a person but Jesus himself. He still heals, he still moves and the word of God is true. So this guy was brought by somebody. He had a cancer in his stomach and he was dying of starvation because every time he tried to eat, the food would just get close to his stomach and then he would throw it all up. And um, the person who brought him had so much faith that she actually dressed him in a suit and he was wearing shoes as well. Um, so, I mean, that is some serious faith. And the guy was very weakly declaring, yes, I can be healed. Yes, I know that Jesus heals and I'm wearing my good suit. I'm wearing, even though it doesn't fit me too well, I'm wearing my good suit and I'm wearing uh, my shoes because I'm getting ready to jump up and down. And uh, do you know what else they did? They brought his food. They brought his food, they bought, brought his drink. Because we are prepared that once he's healed, he'll be able to eat and he'll be able to drink. Because remember, again, God uses the natural course of life uh, in terms of things like eating. Stomach is for food and food for the stomach. Eh? I'll not add the other part of that, that particular scripture. But God does follow that process of in terms of eating. And so many a time we see Jesus raising someone from the dead or um, healing. And then he says, give them some food. So this guy was brought by somebody with so much faith and they brought everything. So do you know, as they prayed and laid hands on him, the guy was just pulled up and he got up and the guy began to walk. He removed his gown because he had his gown over his suit and he was walking around and saying, yes, I knew Jesus was going to heal me and this is my moment. Then he was told, sit down. So his food had a straw. His uh, drink had a straw. So he sits down to drink. And as the preacher is declaring, you are healed and that food is going to stay in your stomach. I love the sensitivity of the preacher because he was sensitive enough to know, yes, the guy is healed but we also need to declare that that food must stay down in his stomach because also that gives the person faith as well to believe that I'm, yes I'm healed but I'm also not going to throw up because a lot of people struggle with different levels of faith so the guy sits down and he's taking his drink as the whole church is praying and declaring the glory of God right before television channels and this is a miracle that happened in um, the early the early 1800s and um, as they declare it and they glorify God, mid, let me say mid 1800s, I think it was around 1854. And as they declare it and declare it, the guy drinks, but also what this guy does, I loved this guy. I mean, I was like, man, I'd love to meet someone with such faith. The guy removes the cover of the thing. He opens the whole thing and throws away the straw and begins to drink and basically he's gulping down everything. And the preacher is laughing and saying the straw is too small. And what this guy wanted to do, the guy who had been sick, is he wanted Jesus glorified. He wanted people to know I'm healed, not through straws, not through tiny little gulps, but I want you to know that I am healed. And those are the people that God uses that declare the healing of God. And you know, the moment that God touches you, your life changes. Uh, my very first miracle for me, when I gave my life to Christ, even before I moved into my calling or whatever it is, um, about a year after I'd given my life to Christ, I found out that Jesus heals. I'd never heard it. Nobody had ever told me that Jesus heals, just like I'd never learned that Jesus saves. But when I learned that Jesus healed, I believed it. It was in a boretum and I stepped forward and someone laid hands on me and I said, yes, I believe that Jesus will heal me. I had ulcers from the age of nine years old, which is the same time that the enemy had put depression upon me as I went to boarding school and I'd struggled with ulcers for a whole that was what? Uh, a whole seven years? Seven years? Yes. And we're told 
if you believe if like for example you have ulcers go home and eat mm -hmm. and i got home and i took skuma wiki which i could not eat then i i can't remember, i think i took chili and there was absolutely no pain and the lord healed once in a while i have had an attack like this week i had an attack where i was feeling some acidity and it's a well-known condition because of course if you've been sick for about um you know for a whole seven years you remember the pain you remember the feeling you remember the symptoms and that's the problem that a lot of people make because as the condition comes oh dear god the children sorry 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 some children are playing with our instruments down there okay the little boy is refusing to move away okay he's moved away sorry about that well, i'm just waiting for some people to come and help me to collect the instruments and the little boy has decided he's going to play with them so um one of what the things that satan uses is the feeling of weakness the feeling of weakness the feeling of uh, the feeling of what god my babies are here to say hi the feeling of uh, what god uh, what what uh, you know the, the the symptoms that you had had before so for example if god heals you from uh, migraines for example uh, migraines come with uh, signs in terms of uh, you can see um, you know i hear you see stars you you begin to your 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 eyesight begins to dim and everything so um what what uh, happens is God heals you of that migraine headache, but what the enemy is going to use is those symptoms. So you're used to, as they are be it's beginning to come, you say, oh boy, it's coming, it's coming. You lie down, maybe you take an ice pack and all that. And the moment you do that, if God has healed you, or let me say when God has healed you, then what you do is that you give the devil permission and what you're doing is that you're saying, I'm actually not healed. And that's how you're taken over. You know, in the case of things like ulcers, I've, I mean, it's been so many years since I was healed, uh, but yet from time to time like this week as i've been fasting the enemy has tried to bring those signs and a little bit i start getting a little afraid imagine it's been so many years since that happened and yet i just begin to feel a little afraid and you know it's it's, it's a it's a dread of what's just about to come then the holy spirit reminds me you are healed you are healed and it's a continuous battle of declaring i am healed the other thing is and the most dangerous perhaps is where um family members are used to you know if you're sick or a sickling family members get used to treating you a certain way so your family members um actually become like a crutch to you so uh you know if for example you've been reacting whenever cold comes your family members will begin to say oh watch out cold is coming and they add on to the fear that you are not healed so those are some of the things that we need to watch out for even as we are believing god for healing but really what is uh, what is brought on by god is sustained by god and so we sustain our healing even by continuing to believe if it hasn't manifested yet you have to believe that spiritually you are healed and it's only the manifestations that have to bow to the name of Jesus Christ. So again, what to declare? You declare, I am healed. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am healed. It doesn't matter what the devil may try, even in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please share the video as well to help somebody. We're just about to have our service. If you can get there to Fungamano House, please come where God is moving. Uh, Fungamano House is just near Mamlaka. If you can just Google it, it will be easier to find it. But we have our service from 5.30 to 8.30. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And stay blessed. You are blessed.